So some of the key events of the of the American War of Independence specifically, right? We're starting with the Stamp Act crisis, right? The British Parliament passes the Stamp Act, imposing a direct taxation on American colonies that led to, right, the entire um boycott by the Sons of Liberty, right? So we could look at that in seventeen um sixty five. Right then, in seventeen seventy, where the Boston massacre, and in seventeen seventy three, where the Boston Tea Party, and in seventeen seventy four, we have the first Continental Congress. No, there's a dispute on when the revolution actually begun. Begun, right? Some say in some say the revolution truly started with the first Continental Congress of seventeen seventy four. Some say it truly started with the Battle of Lexica, Lexington and Concord. Right in 1775. That's why you guys gave me mixed answers right, as it relates to when did it begin. Right? So in 1774, the first Continental Congress, so delegates from 12 of the colonies convened in Philadelphia to, co to coordinate um, colonial responses to the British policies. Right? The Congress issued the Declaration of Rights and Grievances, calling for the repeal of oppressive British measures. Right? So now, what we're seeing is now the establishment of this Congress now really speaks to the fact that the citizens themselves now are really taking some amount of control over their political right to actually lead themselves or their right to lead themselves, the right for self-determination. So that was happening there within the first Continental Congress of 1774. And in 1775 now, that is where we actually had the entire um, I would say no military revolution beginning right so british troops attempted to seize colonial and military supplies in concord massachusetts leading to the first armed conflict of the war right so we had that there so the first armed conflict there the first shots were fired within um these battles here of lexington and concord right some persons would refer to the first um battles here to be the shot fired up um, heard around the world right um the start of the war of independence right and then we have the second continental congress being formed in the same year right 1775 right and now this is where they actually you know appointed george washington right as the commander in chief of the continental army right now forming an actual nationalist army a nationalist government actually fight against British rule, rulership over the colonies, right? After that, in 1776, we have the Declaration of Independence, right? So they declared themselves independent from British rule in 1776, right? And then we have the Battle of Long Island, right, where British forces defeated the Continental Army in the largest battle of the war, leading to the retreat of the American troops from New York City. So here right it looks like a turning point everything got worse before everything got better right so in 1776 at the battle of long island it really looked as if everything was going to fall apart at this point right but this is where we had some amount of interference right with job with um thomas jefferson and benjamin franklin visiting the french right so the french were actually beaten within the Seven Years War, which was a war prior to this, right? And they were looking at ways in which they could actually harass, right, the British, right, um, who were the victors in that war, right? So they were looking at ways to harass their enemy, right? They were looking at any type of way to really get back at Britain, right? So therefore, we had some amount of um, French interference, right? So in 1777, we had the Saratoga campaign where American forces achieved a decisive victory the victory at the Battle of Saratoga, convincing now France to enter the war on the side of the colonialists, right, or the colonists, as I should say. Colonialists and colonists are two different things, so it should be saying colonists, right? 1777 to 1778, right, we have something described as the Valley Forge, right? So the Continental Army would have suffered through harsh winters, right? So now we're generally looking at the environmental impacts, right, of, um, of the war specifically and how it really took a bad turn for the continental army right um during um extreme hardships right in pennsylvania right many of the troops would have died right they weren't funded properly 
right? Many persons never really wanted to fight. They recruited enslaved individuals as well to fight on the behalf of the colonists, right? Um, to actually um, embolden or um, both of the forces to actually stand a chance against the British, right? But they actually emerged as a stronger and more disciplined force because of this, right? So their hardship specifically didn't lead to them losing, right? Or didn't lead to them dismantling the the revolutionary attempts, right? But they actually emerged stronger for this and became a more disciplined fighting force, right? Then we had here in 1781, the siege of Yorktown, where American and French troops combined together, right? Commanded by George Washington and, um, and his, um, this person here, Cop de Rochambeau, would have been one of the um, French um, officials, right? Would have actually helped to lead the battle or the campaign or the siege, rather, of Yorktown, right? So they trapped the British army under um, General Cornwallis at Yorktown, Virginia, right? And Cornwallis would have surrendered, effectively ending major military operations in North America, right? So um, General Cornwallis would have been one of those generals, right? Or one of those military officials that would have controlled one of the largest. Um, military forces that the British had in North America. So with his surrender, it really ended all dreams or all um, thoughts of the British really conquering or really sending back troops into the fray to really actually continue the war, right? So at that point there, the British really called it quits, really said that this would have been, you know, the last attempt here, and right? this would be the end of the war officially. So in 1783, we had the Treaty of Paris, right? So the Treaty of Paris would be signed in, in 1783, formally ending the war and recognizing American independence. And the British cedes, um, cedes the territories, meaning gives the territories to the United States and agrees to withdraw its troops from American soil, right? So that's really a rundown of the key events, right, for the War of Independence, right? So that's really it for that.